Scientists at the renowned California State Polytechnic University demonstrate the latest in sophisticated gadgetry. And a whopper of a gadget it is. Astute observers will notice no method of locomotion, either steam powered or gyroscopic. But how does it operate, you ask? Just as mighty Zeus in ages past, this microscope harnesses the power of electricity invented by Benjamin Franklin more than 200 years prior, magnifying significant specks in glorious monochrome. While this mechanism sounds elementary enough, to be sure, this electron microscope is more convoluted than Tammany Hall. By heating a metallic filament to extreme temperatures, this contraption can fire a beam of particles scientists call electron through a magnetized column and into a chamber filled with evaporated water. Scientists discovered a means of using this water at a very low pressure to control galvanic signals generated by this gadget. By firing this focused high-energy beam to electrons at a simple interest, we generate more electrons with less energy that interact with the water in the chamber. The excited water molecules travel towards a galvanic detector, re-emitting electrons and exciting other water molecules in a cascade amplification effect. Upon reaching this detector, the signal travels to a sophisticated digital tabulating device known as a computer. This computer interprets the signal as the beam travels over the surface. But wait! Doesn't the steam stop the incoming beam? This would seem the logical conclusion, but the galvanic radiation compromising the primary beam is so powerful that it burns its way through the rarefied atmosphere within the chamber. The slight disruption it causes is called a skirt, and is an order of magnitude weaker than the primary beam, weakening even further as it deviates from the primary target. Error correction is built right into the computer. If it burns through the atmosphere, why not the sample? Because the water within the chamber, upon reaching the galvanic detector, becomes charged opposite that of the surface of the sample. As any child who has played with magnets can explain, opposite poles attract. The same holds for galvanic current. The charged water swoops through the area, alleviating temperature and charge effects caused by the beam. And here it is in action. The top of the image was taken after increasing the pressure in the chamber, negating some of the charging seen in the bottom portion. Yes, this is truly a miracle of science. With this advanced technology, specimens of any composition can be viewed at thousands of times greater resolution than the naked eye. Metals, composites, polymers, yes, even biological samples like insects can be observed in real time. Ice crystals can be seen forming and melting. All of this is facilitated by a means of a differential pumping mechanism. By installing this minute aperture at the end of the electron gun, the column remains at a high vacuum, allowing the sophisticated gadgetry to function without interference. After all, water and electricity don't mix. But where does this water come from? There are no kettles or pipes here to carry it in. That's because the pressure is so low, it only takes a few drops to fill the entire chamber. The excess is stored in this small beaker, located in the back of the electron microscope itself. Simply open the valve, and away she goes!